So starting out, I am using a mask that I bought off of Amazon and I am just going to cut out the mouth part. That way I can go ahead and match that onto my own face. So here um, it is cut out, but I do need to separate the top and the bottom halves from each other. So all of that black stuff in between the teeth are going to be cut out. So this is a finished product and it is a little flimsy, which I wasn't too happy about, but I was able to make it work. So here I'm just lining it up to where I want it to sit on my face. As you guys can see, I cut underneath the nose. That is my center point. And then I'm going to go ahead with some spirit gum and I'm going to apply this just so it would be a, a sticky base. It'll give my mask something to stick onto. I did spray a cotton pad with a little bit of alcohol, that way I can dry out my skin. That way the spirit gum would sit a little bit better. So I am trying my best to line up um, the mask with where I want it to be and once I'm happy with that, I have to sit there for a little bit and let it dry. So now I'm going to go ahead with some regular white tissue paper and I'm cutting the squares in half, basically splitting those two sheets apart. And then I'm using uneven pieces of the tissue paper to go ahead and make fake skin. Now, in order to do that, I did go ahead with some, you know, uh, regular school white glue. And I'm going to apply that both to my face and to the area of the mask because that's where I want the tissue paper to stick. Now the way this works is you want to go in really, really small layers and I'm trying to um, wet the tissue paper. That way when I break it, it won't be those super hard edges. Um, it'll look more natural. And again, I'm just using regular school glue. Um, you can use Elmer's, you can get glue from the Dollar Tree, it really doesn't matter. Now, um, you're supposed to let each layer dry in between adding new pieces. Um, and overall, I did add um, two full layers to make my fake skin. So this right here would still count as the first layer. Now, one thing I could have done differently is I could have added a little bit, uh, one more layer where the mask and my skin overlap just because I had that really hard line in between. Um, but for future reference, I would go ahead and add one more layer on top of um, where your mask and your skin meet because you're going to have that hard line. So this is me applying that second um, layer of fake skin. And again, I am using just regular school glue to go ahead and make that tissue paper wet. That way when I break it, it looks more natural. Now because I am adding uh, more layers, I went ahead and switched sides. That way I can let this side dry. I do have a fan running um, at the same time, so uh, my, my fake prosthetics do dry a little bit faster. One thing I would have done a little bit differently is I would have applied my liquid foundation while this was still drying as opposed to waiting until the whole thing is completely dry because then uh, I didn't have like a really good surface and it kind of just looked 
uh, crunchy. So I did go ahead and fast forward. I did have um, two layers of fake skin before I moved on to the bottom half. I just went ahead and fast forward that just because it's really tedious and you guys already see the process. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom half. I am mapping out where I want that bottom jawline to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some spirit gum to try to make it stick. But I was having some issues because the bottom was really flimsy. Um, so I went ahead with a white eyeliner pencil just to map out where exactly I wanted that jawline to go. And for stability, I'm adding these jumbo cotton balls just to give the bottom jawline a little bit more strength just because it kept falling over. So here I am just going ahead and um, wetting the entire area with that spool glue. So once I have the basic area of where I want that jawline to be, I'm going to go ahead and add fake skin to the bottom half. And again, we're just going over the area with a uh, heavy coat of that spool glue. And then we're going to go ahead with our tissue paper. Make sure that your edges are rough. You don't want any clean edges at all when you're doing this. And then you're going to go ahead and let that dry. Once everything is dry, make sure that you do two layers of tissue paper before going in with your liquid foundation to make sure it's the same color as your skin.
Now that I have both um, jaw lines done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the base for our uh, blood. So this is some grease paint and I'm gonna go ahead with that red and I'm just gonna go ahead and basically fill in that entire area that I want to be basically the inside of the mouth. And I'm gonna go and paint that entire area red. Now, uh, because this is grease paint, it will be very shiny and it's kind of like an oil base. So at some point I will go in with a translucent setting powder just so I can add some uh, makeup eyeshadow just to deepen that red. Uh, but for now, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the fake skin for around the neckline. That way uh, we have a full complete jaw. So here I'm going to I'm going in with that uh, translucent setting powder, and this is by Wet n Wild, and I'm just adding a little bit. And again, this is to take away um, all of that shine, and this is so I can add some eyeshadow on top of this grease paint. That way, I can deepen that red. And don't forget those cotton swabs that you put on the bottom too. Those also need to be colored. So to deepen that red, I'm going in with the Festivals palette by Javius Place, and I'm mixing that dark red and that tomato red. I forgot to show it, but I am going in with a different color. Uh, I went into that black and I will be mixing a little bit of purple in that as well. And that is to give this jaw, this wound, depth. So you wanna add a little bit of black. Don't go overboard. You don't want it too, too black. You just wanna add a little bit of depth. Normally in a, in a real wound, you'll see all deep shades of red, black, purple, just to show that bruised skin. So now I'm gonna go ahead with my liquid foundation. This is uh, LA Girl, the Pro Coverage, and this is the color Warm Caramel. And again, like I mentioned, I should have done this a little bit sooner because now the fake skin is a little bit more crunchy. And if I would have done this when it was a little bit on the softer side, uh, it would have blended a little bit better. And as you can see, uh, I didn't let that uh, cotton swab dry at all, so it's kind of flimsy. But here I'm going on the edges with a little bit of that black, purple, and red mixture. And I'm just following up on the edges of that fake skin. That way that skin looks bruised. 
I'm also add, adding a little bit of texture and depth to places that I felt like needed to look more realistic. Here I'm just adding a little bit more uh, spirit gum to that fake skin because it started to lift. I was being a little bit too rough when I was trying to add depth to those edges. And when you're doing this, you can go ahead and try to lift the skin a little bit. That way I look like some of that skin had been torn. So now I pretty much got the base done and I'm going to go ahead and add some fake blood. This is just going to really bring everything together. Now I do have white carpet so I have to be very very careful when applying this. Um, that's why I went ahead with a brush instead of just pouring it on my face like I normally would have. So the key to doing a gory look is you want as much blood and as much depth as you possibly can get. I probably should have went in with a blood gel instead of just the fake blood by itself. But I tried to really, really saturate each one of those wounds, really saturate each one of those cotton balls just because, you know, they were really white and it doesn't look as real. So the more blood that you add, the more depth you add, the more texture you add, the realer it's going to look. And as you guys can see, that, that left side of that jaw just kept dropping. So I went ahead with another cotton swab just to try to, you know, give it some stability, some foundation. And it, it just was not working with me that day. So for the finished product, I went ahead and tried to go overboard with the blood. I, I just really wanted it to look really, really wet just because it was coming out a little bit dry. Plus, I had the fan on. But once you go ahead and you turn the lights down and you just saturate that thing with a lot of blood, it looks, it looks pretty scary. So this has been my final look. This is my Monster Mouth for my Halloween series special effects makeup. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. If you guys want me to try anything else, stay tuned because I have a lot more where this came from and I'll see you in the next one.